Okay, so this is the circuit diagram that matches how the prototype is built. Uh, there's only one change from the original concept, and that is that diode. It turns out it can't be a shock cap after all. It needs to be a normal diode uh, to give a, a reasonable voltage drop. Oh, and that resistor is, doesn't exist. That's linked out. And that's that's how it started. A classic back of a beer mat grade or scrap paper at least drawing, which is pretty much the same circuit, just with uh, some little details like the extra decoupling capacitors added across the batteries. Um, that's how it's built for a prototype. And I can if we move that a little bit so you can see both at the same time to some extent. Um, oh no, it's going to work like that. Anyway, see what it goes. Obviously, the, the, the batteries, the positive goes to the to about that level there. N the negative goes to the bottom two tracks, so that's the positive and negative. And the the centre joint, is the junction between the positive of that one, and negative of that one, goes to the some tracks down the centre between those two caps, which are that connection there. And just above that, we've got the diode, the preset, and its feed resistor with a little capacitor across it, which you can just about see under there, a little ceramic cap, which produces a bias variant. That's because I've got my finger over the bottom of it, it's causing leakage, it's flashing. Um, it produces a bias just from the same voltage as the centre point to just a fraction of a volt higher. So that's the threshold for the thing to trigger. And that part, which is just below there, the two diodes and that uh, resistor, is a combination of a bias resistor for the signal input from the coil and uh, voltage protection, so it can't go more than plus or minus 0.6 voltage with a clamp circuit to stop it uh, over voltage in the inputs to the comparator due to the flyback kick from the coil when it switches off. And that's a bit of, well, that's a, just a filter, 100k resistor and 0.1 takes any high frequency noise off it to stop it being sensitive to interference like uh, radio signals and things. Um, that is the coupling capacitor that actually connects the signal to the input of the comparator. Now, from the scope waveform, which I'll have to remember to include, with the magnet and coil polarity the right, right orientation, the right uh, phasing, if you like, the signal, well, whichever way you have it, in principle, the, when you move a magnet through the coil, the voltage the coil produces changes polarity as the magnet starts leaving the coil when it gets past center it's going all the way through basically the field increases up to the point of the magnet centered and then it decreases again whichever way it's moving so it doesn't matter which which way it's moving through you get the same polarity pulse say a positive and then a negative or a negative then a positive and that's what this comparator is sensing it can be set to pick up voltage of millivolts, so the magnet can be moving quite slowly and it'll still pick up the pulse as the thing changes polarity at the centre, as long as you have the wires right way around, to show that the magnet is moving out of the coil rather than into it. So that's doing the same as the, as the mechanical contact switch on the original pendulum. It's providing a timing signal that shows the pendulum is past centre in the coil. So when to give it a push. Then the rest of the circuit does the pushing, if you like. Uh, that's a CMOS comparator. That's a rail to rail input and output. Uh, that's uh, only slightly special part, really. It needs to be a very low power one to uh, operate on th three volts without flattening the batteries. Then the rest of it is discrete components and a CD4093 which is a quad NAND Schmidt trigger gate. 
which is only a few pence. And basically that, that inverts the signal. Normally that that in pins high, so it, to, to start with you can ignore it, that's high, so that's acting as an inverter again. So when it sees a positive pulse at the input, that goes low, that goes high, that goes low. When the, the input to that goes low, which is again the other one would normally be high, it causes its output to go high because it's a NAND gate, not AND. So when that AND that are high, the output, which is inverted, does its AND function but going low instead of high. That's what the dot means on the output, it's inverted. That goes low, sorry, that goes high, sorry. <laughs> sorry again. So those go, that goes low, that goes high to three volts or near enough. Um, that's, that input there is only held down by one meg resistor to not volts normally. So that goes high for some time, depending on the size of the capacitor and that one meg, that def decides how long it will stay high. When that goes high, that goes low, because again it's all, both connected together, it just acts as an inverter, and that is what turns on the transistor. Now, oh that's another thing, I, I did look at using a, a, a little low voltage MOSFET there, but I could only find one possible one that would work, and uh, it's something that a lot of people couldn't easily get hold of probably. So I've actually got just a, gen a generic PMP transistor in there, which fit straight in, it works exactly the same, except it takes a little bit more current on the base whilst it's on. But I think it's a, it's a, it's a good compromise, it makes it easier, and that means there's nothing that uh, you shouldn't be, get, be able to get hold of easily. So basically, when that sees uh, the positive pulse from the coil, or the positive voltage from the coil, as the magnet starts to leave it, assuming you've got it connected the right way around, it fires that, which is actually acting as a monostable, a timer, which turns on the transistor and, and forces full power of the coil for a short time, roughly a tenth of a second or so. Um, and this bit here, it means whilst the coil is powered on, and whilst that's high, sorry, whilst that's low, <laughs> inverse logic, whilst that's low and the transistor's on, the coil voltage is high, through that diode, it discharges that capacitor, which takes that pin low and effectively disables that gate so a trigger pulse can't get through it until the capacitor is recharged. So as I've got in the text here, that, that locks out the firing the trigger circuit. So the, the back EMF and any noise from the coil due to the firing and the field settling and everything, the magnet moving through it, doesn't cause a re-trigger without when the when the magnet's already left, so it gives it a time to to recover before it allows it to start over and uh, produce another pulse. So it's just it's just a stability feature for the cost of a few components, and that's basically it. It detects the change in the voltage polarity from the coil due to the magnet moving through it, and when it does, it gives it a kick through the transistor to keep it moving the same direction. Um, I don't know if it'll work on here. If I just start, yeah, by you, I think you just try to do it then. If we just start moving that in, now I've got it wrong way around. I think it's pulling to the centre then, it pulled back in rather than pulling out. Um, yeah, that's now trying to move out, but it's, it's very sensitive to sudden movements. Um, <laughs> you, know, you see, he's trying to fire the bag that out. If I just move it slightly now, as the magnet start move, magnet starts moving in the outward direction, it picks up the movement and accelerates it quite dramatically. It is actually slightly overpowered. Uh, I've found. <laughs> 